Today's class is the support tutorial, Introduction to the Ammonia Patina, which will be taught in nine parts. Part 2A, the introduction. Part 2B, ammonia all by itself. Part 2C, when ammonia met salt. Part 2D, solutions. Part 2E, wood chips, leaves, and grass. Part 2F, flowers. Part 2G, onions, rice, and red radish. Part 2H, yarn, cloth, lace, and paper. Lastly, Part 2I, preparations and sealing and dealing. While preparing for this lecture, it occurred to me, although I had some basic knowledge of the ammonia patina, it was in truth limited to what I had learnt in school. I thought it was time I got full-on mad scientist and learned what ammonia could do. I spent six months and created 300 samples getting to know ammonia. I was amazed at the surprising range of color and texture I could achieve. Here are a few examples of my samples. What follows are excerpts from my ammonia patina journal, my failures, my successes, and my methodology. Copper takes a patina especially well. Every metal has its own personality. I like to think of copper as an old, smelly, dirty, drunk, homeless man. And if you've ever worked with it, you'll understand why. Because copper is such a dirty, dirty metal, it likes to oxidize. In simple terms, put copper next to a chemical and it will react by changing colors. This process is called patination. The first patina recipe I was introduced to in school uses household ammonia, water, and table salt. This was the starting point for my study. Not much to go on, so I researched existing literature. I quickly found there wasn't a lot of information out there, although some excellent people have offered up some informative YouTube videos. They really only cover a couple of variations. Using salt, ammonia, and vinegar, some involved potato chips, and some mustard. Most intriguing. I spent some time in serious contemplation. If mustard and potato chips could be used with ammonia to form patinas, what other things could be used? I decided anything could be used and set about testing everything. But first, I took a step backwards. As I felt I should get to know ammonia all by itself to discover what ammonia brought to the patina before introducing it to organic material or other chemicals. What I wanted to know, what does ammonia bring to the patina? Household ammonia can be clear or yellow, depending on the manufacturer. I have not noticed a difference and have no preference between the two. Fume chamber. You'll need a plastic container with a lid. Poke a hole through the container, or drill a hole, which will snugly fit your wire. Repeat on the other side and slide your wire through. What gauge of wire? What did you use to poke the hole with? And what size of hole? Does wire have to be copper? Does the container have to be clear? Any container with a lid will do, but a clear container does make it easier to see the progression of the patina without having to open the lid and peek in. I'm using 18 gauge copper wire to suspend my object, but any wire will do, steel, brass, or even silver. In fact, it does not even need to be wire. It could be string or thread, fishing line, or dental floss. Basically anything which can hold your object in place, but not affect the patina. Experiment and see what works for you. There are many ways to make a hole. I'm using an old finishing nail I found in the garage. Anything pointy and the right size will do. The hole should be just a little bit bigger than the wire you're using. If your object has a hole, threading it through a wire works nicely. But if you have multiple objects with holes, a curvy bit of wire will enable each piece to remain separate and not get stuck together. Two wires might be required for objects with no holes from which to hang them. Depending on the object you wish to patina, you will have to get clever and customize the hanging mechanisms. Put a bit of paper towel at the bottom of the fume chamber. 
I used three teaspoons of ammonia for the paper towel fume chamber and one cup of ammonia for the bath fume chamber. I used this recipe as a constant as I decided not to play with different amounts of ammonia at this time, maybe later. You'll also need to do some prep work. It is essential the copper be free of oxides, grease, and dirt. Otherwise, the patina will not work. Well, it'll work. You'll get something, but it may not bond to the metal and will be very fragile. I will go into great detail about how to clean your copper as well as how to seal and deal with your patina in part 2i, preparations and sealing and dealing. Let's get started. But first, inhaling ammonia fumes can be harmful. Don't do it. Always work in a well-ventilated room. Open up some windows if you can. Since ammonia is an irritant, protect your hands, wear gloves, and it can't hurt to wear protective eyewear in case of splashing. And always be sure to read the manufacturer's warning label.